there have been a lot of people asking, is it worth it to get your character to level 130? Is it worth it to keep pulling on the banners until you get a duplicate copy of a character? To put it in short terms for you guys, one duplicate is worth a ton of value because you get all that advanced leveling and stuff like that. Two duplicates, it's okay. It's like kind of minor improvements up until you get to the third duplicate where you are able to UR plus a character. UR plusing a character can make a very big difference in how good your character is. So kind of the two waypoints for doing the DX piece route is your first character and your third character. The second copy of a character you get isn't necessarily as important as either just getting one copy or three copies. So with that information, do what you will, either go for one copy or go for three copies, or maybe you're just happy getting a copy of the character like me. But we are going to be in this video today going over all the DX abilities auto abilities for every character in the game if you were able to get three duplicate copies of a character we're going to be starting with deku and we're just going to go down the list the dx skills the unique auto skills for each character are the same for every iteration of the character so right here you see sr deku uh, these ex auto skills are going to be exactly the same on every version of deku including the ur versions and the rare versions so I've taken every SR character in the game and pulled up their pages just like this because SR characters, there's more different types of SR characters than we actually have UR characters. For example, we do not have a UR Flect, we do not have a UR Mina, but we do have SR versions of them so we can see their unique EX auto skills by looking at their SR characters and maybe see what their URs could have down the line if we ever get UR versions of those characters. So starting with Deku here. His first unique EX auto skill that you can roll for, and it's important to note that uh, each of these have a 10% chance of being obtained. So every time you roll for one of these unique EX auto skills, you have a 10% chance to get them, and you do have to use character pieces to roll for them. It is 20 pieces to be able to re-roll. When HP is below 25%, gives character piercing shot and increases their skill impact by 15% for two turns. That, that EX auto skill, I would say, is not that great because it requires you to be below 25% HP. However, for a character like the Fantasy Deku, who has persistence, that could be a very good skill because that would give him piercing shot and just make him hit even harder, which I don't feel is like really necessary with how hard fantasy Deku hits, but hey, you know what, why not? When HP is below 5% for the second skill, gives character resilience and once per battle, gives them the ability to make a last stand three times. That last stand can actually be really good. It wouldn't be as useful on Fantasy Deku because Persistence kills him after three turns anyways, but on other Dekus, that last stand could be the difference maker, especially like imagine uh, Celebration Deku. That would be really, really good on him, right? And then the next EX skill increases character's power by 20% for three turns when character makes the last stand. That's okay. Increases character's power by 20% for four turns when a wave starts. Increases characters plus ultra move skill impact by 15% every three turns up to three times, increases characters power by 25% when HP is below 50%, gives character the ability to evade one time every three critical hits up to three times. I think out of all of these skills, and I'll do this for each of the characters, I think these top two skills are going to be the most useful for any version of Deku that you get. These other ones are nice because they do increase power, they increase skill impact and things like that. They give evasion, they're, they're okay, but I think these top two skills, you're going to find that you have the most value with those top two skills for the unique EX auto skills. The next character is Bakugo, and we got a ton of these characters to get through. It is going to be a little bit of a longer video, so hopefully you guys are prepared. The first EX auto skill for Bakugo, increases characters plus ultra gauge by 5% every time a critical hit is made. That's pretty decent, but most Bakugos already raised their own plus ultra gauge, so eh. Increases chance of character causing blinding and burning lowers chance of character becoming blind. This is massive when it comes to VE Tower. This will make Bakugo a lot better in VE Tower. For example, Fantasy Bakugo has a low chance to blind, right? This will increase that basically to a medium chance to blind, which is super, super helpful. I think any any unique EX auto skill that increases a status ailment's chance is automatically like one of the best EX auto skills you can roll. The next auto skill, 
increases character skill impact by 20 percent for every three for three turns every three critical hits kind of the same as deku right eh. increases characters plus ultra gauge by five percent per turn up to eight times Character skill impact is increased by 10% every two turns up to three times. Increases character plus ultra gauge by 25% every time they defeat an opponent. That's probably the most useless one right there. Increases character plus ultra move skill impact by 25% for four turns when a wave starts. So all of those are just kind of meh. It seems like the top two are usually the like the really good ones. The ones that are longer though, this is just also kind of a hint. The ones that are longer are typically the ones that are better for these EX auto skills. The next character is Uraraka. Once per battle, shortens character's action skill cooldown time by three when HP is below 40%. That could be really, really good and given the right circumstances, right? But I've never been a fan of when it says drops below a certain amount of HP, you get this effect because you're not always guaranteed to drop below a certain amount of HP and that makes it hard to rely on those abilities consistently, right? So I'm not a big fan of that. Gives all allies the ability to evade for one turn when character gets knocked out. Not a fan of that, you don't wanna get knocked out, right? Increases defense of all allies by 15% for three turns when wave starts. That is phenomenal. That is actually really, really good. Imagine that right now with Najire having Celebration or Araka on your team, getting an extra 15% defense for the first three turns. That can be massively, massively good. Reduces critical damage to character by 30% for four turns when battle starts. Regenerates HP of all allies by 15% for three turns when character gets knocked out. Don't like that one. Gives character the ability to evade one time every three critical hits up to three times. Eh, it's okay. I still think the other one's obviously better with the defense. And then reduces damage to character by 15% for two turns after receiving two attacks from an opponent with higher power. Yeah, so by far, the one that gives defense to all allies, uh, yeah, that one's kind of broken. That one's really good. That's the one you're gonna, gonna wanna re-roll for on Uraraka. Next, we have Ida. Increases character speed by 30% when character has the ability to use two normal attacks. Okay, so that's good for like green Ida, not so much for fantasy Ida, right? When battle starts, it gives character immunity to speed down <laughs> for two turns and gives them the ability to use two normal attacks for three turns. This is really good on fantasy eater right immunity to speed down he's already one of the fastest characters in the game people use him a lot in ultra arena and then giving him two normal attacks for three turns that's really good gives character the ability to evade one time after receiving two attacks from an opponent affected by speed up up to three times this is another really good one uh, for pvp because everybody's using speed up memories in pvp so that's another really solid uh, ex skill for fantasy eater increases speed of all allies by 15 percent for two turns when a wave starts another solid one really good like a lot of Edas are actually really good. Once per battle, when an ally gets knocked out, don't like that. Increases characters plus ultra gauge by 35%, plus ultra move skill impact by 30% for three turns. That, yeah, that one's not as good. Gives character the ability to evade one time every three critical hits up to three times. Eh, it's okay. Increases character's power by 20% when speed is increased. Eh, it's okay once again. So Ida has quite a few good ones. He also has some not so good ones. The next character is Todoroki, just continuing down the line. His first First EX auto skill is increased chance of character causing burning and burning their opponent in Hellfire, lowers chance of character getting burned, and reduces damage to character by 20%. Once again, any EX auto skill that increases the chance of a status ailment happening, I would consider to be good. Almost every single Todoroki in the game does some sort of burn damage, so that is really good. Here's another one, increases chance of character freezing, causing freezing or frostbite, lowers chance of character getting frozen or frostbite so this is not just the opposite end of the spectrum right it's the same thing as the burning but with freezing it is really really good so both of these top two unique ex auto skills are very good the rest of them it looks like they're not going to be great but we'll see increases characters action skill impact by 25 percent when hp is 70 percent or higher yeah i'm not a fan of that increases characters power by 20 percent for four turns when a wave starts reduces critical damage to character by 30 percent for four turns when battle starts gives character a barrier that nullifies one hit every time they defeat an opponent it would be so good if it wasn't that part right there defeating an opponent up to six times there's not even six opponents what we don't have a single type of content in the game that has six opponents we have five but not six unless they're thinking you know what maybe they're thinking ahead maybe we're gonna have some sort of stuff in the future where we have more than five opponents so uh yeah keep that 
in mind. I guess, well, we do have content in the game, the story mode missions, huh, right? We got the, when you take on the bots and you take on multiple waves, but that's not really useful. So, I mean, maybe, maybe. It increases characters plus ultra moves skill impact by 15% for three turns every two critical hits. Yeah, so the top two, by far the best two on Todoroki. Next, we have Sue. She gives character camouflage when HP is 80% or higher. Camouflage is good. It means that the attacks targeted towards you have a chance of missing. So that's actually a pretty decent one. It's not as good on like Fantasy Sue who can already hide. That's not going to be as useful. This is pretty good though. Gives character bullseye when camouflage. So if you have a way to camouflage Fantasy Sue, which you don't right now, but if there was like a memory that could, right? Then you could give her bullseye on top of her pierce and she'd be just she'd go nuts, right? But for now, giving bullseye when camouflage is actually a pretty solid one. That's good on blue suit, the UR version. Regenerates character's HP by 5% when camouflaged. Reduces critical damage to character by 30% for four turns when the battle starts. When battle starts, decreases character skill impact by 10% and increases critical hit rate by 30% for three turns. That's actually not terrible. I know it has like a detriment where it's like, hey, we're gonna take away some skill impact, but increasing your crit rate by 30%, that could actually be really good and that could actually be really helpful uh, in things like PvP and and VE Tower. That would be good in both, right? So you want to hit crits in VE Tower to get a higher score. You want to hit crits in PvP to do more damage. And while it may take away 10% skill impact, you're basically giving yourself a much higher chance at hitting a crit. So this opens you up to putting like a speed memory on a character and then not having to worry about crit because you're getting crit from this uh, skill right here, which is cool. And then reduces damage to character by 15% for two turns after receiving two attacks from an opponent with higher power. Increases critical skill impact of all allies by 20% for three turns when the battle starts. That's actually not a terrible one either. But the camouflage ones kind of suck in a way because they're only good for particular versions of Sue. But who knows, maybe in the future we'll get a memory that allows us to camouflage characters. There might actually be one. I can't remember off the top of my head. I don't think there is, but if there is, yeah, that could be okay. The next character we have is Mineta. When hiding, and you know, Mineta hides quite frequently uh, with his kits. When hiding, increases character's critical hit rate by 20% and skill impact when landing a critical hit by 20%. This is really good because right now we only have SR Minetas. SR Minetas are mainly gonna be used in VE Tower and what do you want in VE Tower? You want critical hits. So having increased 20% critical hit rate while he's hiding is actually really good. This is a really good, uh, specifically for VE Tower, unique EX auto skill. His next EX auto skill increases character's defense by 20% if there are any female characters on the team. Increases skill impact of all female allies by 20% if we ever get a UR version that could be good for like PvP. When battle starts, decreases character skill impact by 10% and increases critical hit rate by 30% for three turns. Another critical hit rate one where you take away some skill impact. Once again, that could be good for VE Tower. Increases character's power by 10% for three turns every two critical hits. Increases character's defense by 20% when power is increased. So he could potentially always have defense up of 20% pretty easily. And then increases character's defense by 5% per turn up to six times. So that's 30% defense by the time you get to turn six, which is eh. I think I prefer this one more. It's gonna be a little bit better than the other EX auto skill. The next character we have is Kirishima. Kirishima's first uni unique EX auto skill lowers chance of character getting burned and gives character defense down immunity for two turns. That's so good. Defense down immunity is really, really good, right? So they can't lower your defense. That makes them like, oh, fantasy Kirishima loves that, right? Reduces burning damage to character by 20% as well. Once per battle, gives character the ability to make less stand for two turns when HP is below 25%. That's solid for Kirishima. Reduces critical damage to character by 25% when covering allies. That's also really good. Reduces critical damage to character by 30% for four turns when battle starts. Solid. Increases character's power by 25% when HP is below 50%. That's not as good. That's one of the worst ones. Increases character's plus ultra gauge by 25% every time they defeat an opponent. I don't like that one either. Increases character's defense by 20% for three turns after receiving two critical attacks. That one's, uh, it's okay actually. That one could be very fairly useful increasing defense actually that one's actually pretty good that's an extra defense buff that's actually a really good one so yeah he has some solid unique ex auto skills only really two that i didn't like for him yayurozu 
Increases critical hit rate of all ally UA high student 1A characters by 10%. That is solid. That is very, very good, right? And that's a unique EX auto skill. Once per battle shortens character's action skill cooldown time by three when HP is below 40%. Eh, don't like that once again, below 40%. Increases character's defense by 20% when character's critical hit rate is increased. That's actually decent. You can achieve that easily. Character skill impact is increased by 10% every two turns up to three times. Eh. Once per battle, when an ally gets knocked out, don't like that already, increases characters plus ultra gauge by 35% plus ultra move skill impact by 30% for three turns, regenerates HP of all allies by 15% for three turns when character gets knocked out, eh. Gives character a barrier that nullifies one hit every time they defeat an opponent up to six times. So a lot of hers are actually terrible. I'm not going to lie to you guys. She, I think her best ones are probably this one right here where it increases the critical hit rate of all allies. And this one where it increases her defense if her critical hit rate is increased. So those are probably the two best unique EX auto skills for yeah, Yurozu. Next, we have Tokuyami. I want a UR version of this guy so bad. Sorry, that has nothing to do with this video, but I'm just waiting for it. Let me know down in the comments if you guys feel the same way if you made it to this point in the video. And we're not even halfway done yet. This video is ridiculously long. There are so many unique EX auto skills, right? So, increases character's critical hit rate by 20% when speed is increased. Love that. That's really good. Increases character's normal attack skill impact by 70%. 70% one character has the ability to use two normal attacks. That's really good too. When battle starts, gives character immunity to critical hit rate down for two turns and gives them the ability to use two normal attacks for three turns. That's solid. It increases character's power by 20% for four turns when a wave starts. Character's skill impact is increased by 10% every two turns up to three times. It increases character's power by 20% when defense is increased. It increases character's plus ultra move skill impact by 25% for four turns when a wave starts. Honestly, none of his skills are that bad. His top skills, though, are kind of stand superior to the lower skills on his list. Next, we have Kaminari. Kaminari's first unique EX auto skill increases chance of character causing paralysis automatically. A very, very, very good unique EX auto skill. Imagine Fantasy Kaminari with his paralyzed counter, increasing that chance of paralyzing pretty good lowers chance of character becoming paralyzed as well. So for your purple, you are Kaminari. This will lower the chance of him paralyzing himself, which is great. Increases character's defense by 20% if there are any female characters on the team, which is solid for Fantasy Kaminari. Fantasy Kaminari has a massive health pool, right? So giving him extra defense is really good too. Once per battle gives bullseye to the character for five turns when character's plus ultra move skill impact is increased. Also, really good. Character skill impact is increased by 10% every two turns up to three times. Increases character's plus ultra gauge by 25% every time they defeat an opponent. Increases character's plus ultra move skill impact by 25% for four turns when a wave starts. Increases character's plus ultra move skill impact by 15% for three turns every two critical hits. Once again, he doesn't really have any bad unique EX auto skills. I do think his top three are better than the bottom four though so take that how you will if you are able to get extra copies to get a one of your commonaries to 130 i recommend going for one of the top three unique ex auto skills next we have jiro jiro increases the plus ultra gauge of all allies by 25 percent when a wave starts that is solid that means you could put her in on potentially any ve tower team and have her be useful for your team which is really 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 good like that is one of the best unique e ex auto skills don't underestimate that that's really really good decreases action skill impact of all opponents by 15% for three turns when a wave starts gives character bullseye for three turns when a battle starts that is solid right that's really good in pvp character skill impact is increased by 10% every two turns up to three times once per battle when hp is below 50% increases plus ultra gauge of all allies by 20% and increases their plus ultra move skill impact by 20% for three turns i've said it before i'll say it again hopefully uh, i'll try not to say it too much in this video but once again Whenever it has an HP stipulation, do not go for that EX auto skill because it's not consistently reliable. I do not like skills like that and neither should you hopefully. Increases character's power by 20%. When defense is increased, increases critical skill impact of all allies by 20% for three turns when the battle starts. That is also a fairly solid 
uh, unique EX auto skill. I think the best one by far though is the first one where it increases the plus ultra gauge of all allies by 25% when a wave starts. That is just, it's beautiful. It's actually so, so good. Next, we have Mina. Mina's first unique EX auto skill lowers chance of character getting burned and gives character defense down immunity for two turns, reduces burning damage to character by 20%. That's actually pretty decent, except for Mina is just not really ever going to be used too much as a tank. That would be good for PvP, but we don't have a UR Mina for PvP. Increases character's defense by 35% when HP is below 50%. Don't like the health requirement. Decreases defense of all opponents by 10% for two turns after receiving two attacks from an opponent with higher power. Reduces critical damage to character by 30% for four turns when battle starts. Increases character's defense by 20% for three turns after receiving two critical attacks. Increases character's defense by 20% when power is increased. That's one of the good ones, right? And then increases character's defense by 5% per turn up to six times. I do think these two skills right here are probably going to be the most useful for Mina in my opinion. Next, we have Monoma. Monoma. Increases character's power by 20% if there are any UA high class 1A characters on the team. Increases character's skill impact by 15% for two turns after receiving an attack from an opponent with higher power. Gives character composure when HP is 80% or higher. Increases character's power by 20% for four turns when a wave starts. Reduces critical damage to character by 30% for four turns when battle starts. Increases character's plus ultra gauge by 5% per turn up to eight times. And then increases character's plus ultra move skill impact by 15% for three turns every two critical hits. Uh, out of all of these, I would say I'm really I, I'm not a big fan of any of them, to be honest. I think the top one's decent, giving extra power because it's easy to achieve. And maybe this one we're increasing skill impact for two turns after receiving an attack from an opponent with higher power because once again, it's easy to achieve and you kind of get nice benefits from it. But other than that, none of his are super great or stand out to me. None of them are necessarily bad. Just none of them are like super like, wow, you need to have that as well. Next, we have Kendo. Kendo gives character Bullseye for three turns when battle starts. That'd be really good on a UR Kendo. Uh, it could be good on an SR Kendo too, potentially, depending on like the VE tower stage we're taking on, maybe. Uh, it just depends. But UR Kendo in the future, maybe. Kendo kind of the bane of my existence. We'll see if I... Uh, uh, how it goes whenever they eventually add in a UR Kendo. But yeah, increases critical hit rate of all ally UA high class 1B characters by 15%. That's actually really, really good. That is a solid, solid skill right there. We may not have that many class 1B characters yet, but eventually they'll add them in, right? We got the mushroom girl, the beast guy. We got a bunch of people to add in from class 1B that are kind of sick characters and having that support from Kendo would be amazing. But we got to get, you know, a UR Kendo first probably before we get any of those other class 1B URs. Gives character piercing shot for three turns when battle starts. She has really good unique EX auto skills and that definitely tells me they are going to be putting a UR version of her in the game eventually, much to uh, my dismay. It increases character's power by 20% for four turns when a wave starts. Once per battle when an ally gets knocked out, increases character's plus ultra gauge by 35% and plus ultra move skill impact by 30% for three turns. Not a fan of that one once again. It increases character's power by 10% for three turns every two critical hits. It increases critical skill impact of all allies by 20% for three turns when battle starts. The top... Auto skills are the better ones for her again. Next, we have Tetsu Tetsu, Tetsu Tetsu. And I'm sorry if it seems like I'm running out of breath, guys, because I am and we're not even halfway through yet. It's so many characters and so many auto skills, right? So if you haven't already, please go down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you're not already subscribed, leave me some comments about what characters unique EX auto skill you think is the best so far. Or by the time we get to the end of the video, which unique EX auto skill do you think is the best? What character is worth investing in to get to level 130 in your opinion for their unique EX auto skill. All right. So Tetsu, 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 Tetsu. 
Reduces damage to character by 10% when power is increased. Lowers chance of character getting burned, frozen, and frostbite. Reduces burning damage to character by 20%. That's actually pretty good resistances, right? Increases character's defense by 20% for two turns after receiving two attacks from an opponent with higher power. Reduces critical damage to character by 30% for four turns when battle starts. Increases character's defense by 20% for three turns after receiving two critical attacks. Increases character's power by 20% when defense is increased. Gives character a better Barrier that nullifies one hit every time they defeat an opponent up to six times. Don't like that one. That one's terrible. Uh, so yeah, I think the these two right here are going to be the best unique EX auto skills for Tetsu 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 Tetsu. Now we get into the big three. Starting with Mirio, who has a new character coming out, a new UR version of him. Increases character skill impact by 30% when character has the ability to evade. The new Mirio has the ability to evade quite a bit, so that's an extra 30% skill impact when he can evade. Increases character's max HP by 20% if there are any pro heroes on the team. Increases power of all ally big 3 characters by 15%. That is good. Increases character's power by 25% when HP is below 50%. Increases character's defense by 20% when power is increased that's really good because this new mirio is going to be a defensive character right increases characters defense by five percent every time a critical hit is made up to eight times increases characters plus ultra move skill impact by three percent every time a critical hit is made up to 20 times so it's almost like they knew they were going to make a uh, defensive version of mirio right with having two defensive unique ex auto skills so i'm not exaggerating when i say if you look at these unique ex auto skills you can kind of figure out what you are as or versions of URs are coming to the game in the future for characters that don't have a UR right now. All right, so I do think this one is going to be very good, increasing his defense by 20%. I also love any unique EX auto skill that increases stuff for allies. And so I think this is a very good one as well, especially since you are going to be able to run the new Mirio, hopefully, alongside the new Najire. Next, we have Sun Eater. Sun Eater increases character's power by 10% for three turns every two critical hits they receive. Increases character's max HP by 20% if there are any pro heroes on the team. Increases max HP of all ally big three characters by 15%. So if you have Sun Eater, Najire, and Mirio on a team together there and they all have unique EX auto skills, they could all be buffing each other, right? So Sun Eater buffs HP, Mirio buffs power, and we'll have to see what Najire increases. But yeah, it's kind of interesting how they all have these unique EX auto skills. It's cool, right? When battle starts, it decreases character skill impact by 10% and increases critical hit rate by 30% for three turns, increases character's power by 20% when defense is increased, increases character's defense by 5% per turn up to six times, increases character's plus ultra move skill impact by 3% every time a critical hit is made up to 20 times. Once again, love this one. Uh, this one is still pretty good as well. We've seen that on other characters. So Sun Eater has some decent auto skills. Next, we have Najire. Increases character's plus ultra gauge by 15% every time their HP is restored. Increases critical hit rate of all ally big three characters by 15%. So this is really nice. You're getting 15% crit, 15% health up, and 15% power up. And if you were to run all three of these characters on a team, throw some speed memories on them or whatever other memories you really want on them in PvP, and they would be a solid, you know, overall PvP team. It could be interesting, but you do... The downside is obviously you have to have them all to level 130 to make use of these unique EX auto skills. Once per battle, when HP is below 50%, gives character a barrier that nullifies one hit and increases their defense by 20% for three turns. Once per, ba per battle, when HP is below 50%, increases plus ultra gauge of all allies by 20% and increases their plus ultra move skill impact by 20% for three turns. Reduces damage to character by 15% for two turns after receiving two attacks from an opponent with higher power. Increases character's defense by 20% when their power is increased. Increases character's plus ultra move skill impact by 3% every time a critical hit is made up to 20 times times i do think these two skills are pretty useful i think this one in particular is good on the new ninjure to give her more defense more survivability i also think this skill once again very good if you're able to run it alongside other big three characters even if you're not running 
her alongside other big three characters though she's still giving herself crit rate through this skill because it counts herself among the big three so that's also still good even if you're not running her alongside others so really good unique ex auto skill right there next we have shinso Shinso can decrease the defense of all opponents by 10% for two turns after receiving two attacks from an opponent with higher power. He decreases the speed of all opponents by 15% for three turns when a wave starts, which is, uh, yeah, that's good for PvP, right? But we don't really have a Shinso that we use in PvP right now, but it would be good. Prevents character from getting a status element one time every time their HP is restored. Uh, yeah, that would be pretty freaking sick right about now in the current meta, right? I mean, if anyone has a DX level 130 Shinzo, maybe try him out and see how he works in the current PvP meta. I think uh, if you had this uh, particular skill right here, that would be uh, pretty good. But I don't know who really has a level 130 Shinzo to try it out. But yeah, it would be interesting. When battle starts, decreases character skill impact by 10% and increases critical hit rate by 30% for three turns. Another one of those skills. I still think that one's decent. It's kind of used on multiple characters, though. Increases character's power by 25% when HP is below 50%. Increases character skill impact by 10% for two turns after receiving a critical attack. Increases character speed by 35% for one turn when a wave starts, giving you the speed advantage turn one, which is actually kind of solid. So overall, Shinso has some good, unique EX auto skills that I like. Next, we have All Might. Increases character's power by 5% and defense by 5% when used in a successfully executed skill chain up to six times. This is another one of those unique EX auto skills that is amazing to get because it gives you technical hits on your action skills that might otherwise not be technical hits, which is good for VE Tower or it can give you double technical hits or triple technical hits depending on the version of all might you're using right that can be good for ve tower so this is an amazing ex auto skill any ex auto skill that turns it into a technical hit is really really good gives character piercing shot when hp is 80 percent or higher that's good as well for like pvp increases action skill impact of all allies by 10 percent when ecstatic increases defense of all allies by 20 percent for three turns when the battle starts that's also really good right increases characters plus ultra move skill impact by 15% every three turns up to three times increases characters power by 25% for two turns every three critical hits increases characters defense by 5% every time a critical hit is made up to eight times so honestly all might doesn't have any bad unique auto skills but he does have some that are better than others and i think that top one is definitely the the best auto skill for all might in my opinion Next, we have Aizawa. We are about halfway through at this point. Aizawa cancels one of character status elements every time their HP is restored. Another very good, unique EX auto skill right now, especially in the current meta of PvP. That'd be very good, right? When battle starts, prevents character from getting a status element two times and increases character's defense by 10%. Another PvP oriented unique EX auto skill. Very good. Cancels all status elements of all allies when character gets knocked out. I don't like him getting knocked out, but it could be somewhat useful, I suppose, in PvP. Increases character skill impact by 10% for two turns after receiving a critical attack. Increases plus ultra gauge charge rate by 40% when character skill impact is increased. This is really good for VE Tower. Increases critical skill impact of all allies by 20% for three turns when battle starts. Increases characters plus ultra move skill impact by 25% for four turns when a wave starts. Next, we have Present Mike. Present Mike increases the plus ultra gauge of all allies by 25% when a wave starts. Amazing, right? Same thing as Jiro, really, really good. Increases characters plus ultra gauge by 15% every two critical hits. It's only himself though, so not as good as the top one. Increases characters plus ultra move skill impact by 5% for three turns every time a critical hit is made. Increases speed of all allies by 15% for two turns when a wave starts. That could be useful in PvP. Increases plus ultra gauge charge rate by 40% when character skill impact is increased. Once again, only for himself though. Increases character's power by 20% when speed is increased. Increases character's plus ultra move skill impact by 25% for four turns when a wave starts. He does not have any bad unique EX auto skills either, but he does have this one at the top, which I think is potentially better than all the rest, just because anything that helps all your allies is, in my opinion, going to be 
better. Next, we have Endeavor. Endeavor increases the chance of character causing burning and burning their opponent and Hellfire, just like Todoroki. Anything that does extra status elements or gives you an extra chance of landing your status elements, I consider to be good. Gives character power down immunity for two turns when battle starts. Increases character's action skill impact by 25% when HP is 70% or higher. Increases character's skill impact by 20% every time they defeat an opponent. Eh. Increases character's power by 20% for four turns when a wave starts. Increases character's critical hit rate by 15% every time they defeat an opponent. I don't like the defeat an opponent stuff. Increases character's power by 20% when speed is increased. And then increases character's plus ultra move skill impact by 15% for three turns every two critical hits. The only time defeating an opponent is actually going to come in handy is whenever they eventually add in some form of like infinite dragon ball history content or uh you know super battle road content from dragon ball dokkan battle type stuff where you take on multiple bosses in a row that is the only time that's ever going to come in handy because then let's say you beat the first boss for the second boss you have an extra 15 percent crit that could be useful but as of right now all that's good for is like your normal going through story mode or event stories and it's like i don't need that extra 15 percent crit rate anyways to beat these you know bots because they're not very hard to beat only going to be good in boss fights whenever they hopefully add that type of stuff into the game Next, we have Gran Torino. Once per battle gives character the ability to evade two times when character speed is increased. That's actually pretty decent, right? Having the ability to evade two times is good. One character gets knocked out, increases power of all allies by 30% for two turns, and shortens their action skill cooldown time by one. If it could just do that without the knocked out part, could be good. One battle starts, give char gives character the immunity to power down for two turns, and gives character the ability to use two normal attacks for three turns. Increases speed of all allies by 15% for two turns when wave starts. If we ever get a UR Gran Torino, that will be really good. Increases defense of all allies by 20% for three turns when battle starts. Same thing. Could be really good on Gran Torino and PvP. Increases characters plus ultra move skill impact by 15% every three turns up to three times. Increases characters defense by 5% every time a critical hit is made up to eight times. So yeah, I don't think any of his stuff is too great. I think these two will be the best if we ever get a UR version that can be useful in PvP. Best genus increases chance of character causing binding, lowers chance of character becoming bound. That one is automatically very good, right? Increasing your chance of binding is good. One character gets knocked out, decreases speed of all opponents by 20% for three turns and decreases their skill impact by 20% for three turns. Once again, has to get knocked out. Not great. When battle stars gives character a barrier that nullifies one hit and prevents them from getting a status element one time, that could be a decent one, honestly. The status element, a barrier is not great, but the status element thing is actually massive. Reduces critical damage to character by 30% for four turns when battle starts. Increases defense of all allies by 20% for three turns when battle starts. That's really solid considering he's a defensive character. Increases characters plus ultra gauge by 5% per turn up to eight times. Increases characters defense by 20% when power is increased. I don't think this one's quite as good as giving it to all allies, but it's still decent overall nonetheless. But the biggest ones are going to be the lowering chance to be bound and higher increasing your chance of binding and then increasing the defense of all allies. I do think those are going to be the biggest unique EX auto skills for best genus. Next, we have Night Eye, who we only have a SR version for, but maybe we'll eventually get a UR one. Hard to say. Increases character skill impact by 30% when character has the ability to evade. Gives all allies the ability to land a bullseye for three turns when character gets knocked out. If it wasn't the knocked out part, it would be so good, right? Gives character bullseye for three turns when battle starts. That's good. I would still love to see it on all allies without the knocked out part, though. That would be insane, right? Increases defense of all allies by 20% for three turns when battle starts. Increases character's power by 25% for two turns every three critical hits. Increases character speed by 35% for one turn when a wave starts. Increases character's defense by 5% every time a critical hit is made up to eight times so out of all of these i think his one that gives himself bullseye is probably the best uh so far yeah at least for the night eye that we have in the game right now maybe in the future this will be the best one increases the skill impact when he has the ability to evade if we got a newer night eye that gets evasion a lot we'll have to see because that's all night eye really does in the series is evade until you know he can't anymore because he gets you know you know what happens to him anyways uh fat gum 
It increases characters' power by 10% for three turns every two critical hits they receive. Gives character piercing shot for three turns after receiving three critical attacks. That is a tail tell sign. Tell tail sign, tail tell sign, whatever. For uh, Fat Gum, you are coming up in the future where he transforms from the fat, fat gum into, you know, the skinny one with the big fist. So it gives character piercing shot for three turns after receiving three critical attacks. That will be insane when that comes out. Increases max HP by 20% when character's defense is increased. Increases character's power by 20% for four turns when a wave starts. Increases character's power by 25% when HP is below 50%. Increases character's defense by 20% when power is increased. Increases character's defense by 5% per turn up to six times. So he's going to be a defensive character who is also going to have quite a bit of damage as you can see whenever we do get a ur version of this fat gum i do feel like these ex auto skills are designed not for this version but for one they have kind of pictured down the line next we have hawks hawks increases characters critical hit rate by 20 percent when speed is increased that is solid that's really really good because pretty much every single version of hawks increases their speed so that's good when battle starts increases character speed by 15 percent for three turns and gives character speed down immunity for two turns that's also really good for pvp gives character the ability to evade one time after receiving three attacks from an opponent with higher power up to five times, increases speed of all allies by 15% for two turns when a wave starts. That's really good. Increases character's power by 10% for three turns every two critical hits. Increases character speed by 35% for one turn when a wave starts. Gives character a barrier and nullifies one hit every time they defeat an opponent up to six times. This one's kind of garbage, but he has some really good unique EX auto skills, especially the ones dealing with giving your ally speed and giving him self speed and then also giving crit rate when you have speed up like those are all pretty solid unique ex auto skills next we have shigaraki who increases characters power by 15 percent every time they defeat an opponent meh it's not great when hp is below 25 percent gives character piercing shot and increases their skill impact by 15 percent for two turns could be okay i Eh, I don't like the health requirement though. Once per battle, increases character's plus ultra gauge by 30% and gives character piercing shot for two turns when HP is below 30%. Once again, eh. Increases character's power by 20% for four turns when a wave starts. Once per battle, regenerates character's HP by 20% for two turns when HP is below 50%. He has so many of these. This is ridiculous. They've, get, they've done him dirty. Increases character's critical hit rate by 15% every time they defeat an opponent. They've done him so dirty. Gives character the ability to evade one time every three critical hits up to three times this might be his best skill right here <laughs> it might be his best skill uh yeah a lot of uh defeat an opponent or be below a certain amount of health i ugh, ugh. his are actually terrible terrible unique ex auto skills in my opinion but let me know what you guys think down in the comments kuro giri when character gets knocked out increases plus ultra gauge of all allies by 30 percent and speed by 20 percent for three turns once again, he's getting knocked out. It would be good other than that. Increases speed of all ally villains by 15%. That's really good. If we ever get a UR version of Kurogiri in the future, that could be good for PvP. Once per battle, gives character the ability to evade three times when skill impact is increased. That's really good as well. Increases speed of all allies by 15% for two turns when a wave starts. That's solid. There's no villain requirement on that one. Gives character ability to evade one time every three critical hits up to three times. That's solid. Increases plus ultra ga gauge charge rate by 40% when character skill impact is increased. Increases critical skill impact of all allies by 20% for three turns when the battle starts. Kurogiri's skills, amazing compared to Shigaraki's, and I think he has a lot. He's going to have a ton of utility if he ever gets a UR version for a villain team in Arena eventually. It doesn't seem like any of these are really oriented or designed to go for a, a V tower version of him and that's why i keep saying pvp for a lot of these things next we have stain increases chance of character causing bleeding and blind and binding okay so we're gonna have a stain down the line hear me out that is a ur version who's going to bleed and bind and he's going to be ridiculously good and he's going to have gives character crit hit rate down immunity he's going to have a high crit rate that's the future of stain. That's the future of the UR stain that we've all been praying and hoping for, right? It's going to happen. It's going to happen someday, guys. And this is what you can expect. So look forward to that. Increases critical hit rate of all ally villains by 15%. Oh, it's beautiful. 
It's honestly beautiful. Increases character's power by 20% if there are any pro heroes on the team. Increases character's power by 25% when HP is below 50%. Increases character's critical hit rate by 15% every time they defeat an opponent. Don't like that part. Increases character's power by 20% when speed is increased. Increases character's plus ultra skill impact by 25% for four turns when a wave starts. Hear me out, he's probably gonna increase his own speed too. That would be my guess. That would be my guess. So I, whenever you are staying comes out, I'm here for it. I'm waiting for it. I think everybody is. Next, we have Dobby. Increases chance of character causing burning and burning their opponent in Hellfire, just like Endeavor and Todoroki, which is really good. He has power down immunity for two turns. Once per battle gives character the ability to make a last stand for two turns when HP is below 25%. That's actually okay for Dobby since, you know, Dobby's kind of a glass cannon that could be useful. Medium chance of burning all opponents for six turns when character gets knocked out. Don't like that. It would be good other than the knocked out part. Increases character's power by 20% for four turns when a wave starts. Increases character's power by 25% when HP is below 50%. Increases character's critical hit rate by 15% every time they defeat an opponent. Eh. Don't like that. Don't like that at all. Increases character's plus ultra move skill impact by 3% every time a critical hit is made up to 20 times. So his first skill, obviously, like by far the best skill for Dobby. Toga increases the chance of character causing bleeding and reduces bleeding damage to the character by 30%. Love those skills. Once again, that increase your chance of landing a status ailment. Increases critical hit rate of all ally villains by 15%. That is solid. That's another good one. Increases critical skill impact by 30% when character's critical hit rate is increased increases characters critical hit rate by 15% every time they defeat an opponent increases characters power by 10% for three turns when every two critical hits gives character the ability to evade one time every three critical hits up to three times increases characters power by 20% when speed is increased she has some okay ones here uh, this one's bad because of the defeat an opponent part but the first one is still by far the best unique ex auto skill that you could get for toga next we have muscular we're getting closer to the end, guys. Muscular increases chance of character causing bleeding, reduces bleeding damage to character by 30%. Hear me out, you are muscular in the future, right here. He is going to be a bleed machine, and this is gonna be nice. Increases characters plus ultra gauge by 15% after receiving an attack from an opponent affected by power up, up to eight times. He's also gonna be a tank. He's also most likely gonna be a tank, so a tank character that can bleed. That'd be my guess. After receiving an attack from an opponent, making a last stand reduces damage to character by 20% for two turns and increases plus ultra gauge by 20%. I know the current muscular in the game is a tank. I would expect the UR version in the future to be a tank as well. Increases characters plus power by 20% for four turns when a wave starts. Increases characters plus ultra gauge by 25% every time they defeat an opponent. Increases characters power by 10% for three turns every two critical hits. Gives character a barrier that nullifies one hit every time they defeat an opponent up to six times. So he has some terrible ones like this one and this one, but then he also has a really good one with his first one, which increases the chance of bleeding, right? So, I mean, eh, it kind of balances out. At least he has some good ones. I feel like Shigaraki has like no good ones. So muscular still been more nice than Shigaraki for whatever reason. Next we have twice. Gives character the ability to overwhelm when HP is below 40%. That could be nuts, actually. I don't think I've ever seen a twice with overwhelm. You don't see too many level 130 plus twices, though. But uh, somebody get a uh, blue UR twice to 130 plus. Put him into Ultra Arena for me and let me see that overwhelm because that could be kind of scary, actually. That might be interesting to see. Regenerates HP of all allies by 10% for three turns when a wave starts. Increases max HP of all ally League of Villains characters by 15%. Once per battle when HP is below 50%, increases plus ultra gauge of all allies by 20% and increases their plus ultra move skill impact by 20% for three turns. Regenerates HP of all allies by 15% for three turns when character gets knocked out. Eh. Gives character a barrier that nullifies one hit every time they defeat an opponent up to six times. Increases character's plus ultra skill impact by 15% for three turns every two critical hits. So these two are terrible skills. The rest of them, fairly decent. And I think the overwhelm one is kind of interesting and I would be interested to see how that one works out. Compress is next. He gives all allies the ability to evade one time after receiving two attacks from a hero up to two times. So that could be actually really 
that could be good especially with compress being in the current ultra arena meta could be very very good right and i think it just says hero it doesn't say pro hero and so that counts all the ua high students yeah that could be really really good right gives character the ability to evade two times when an ally gets knocked out increases character's power by 30 percent when character has the ability to evade when battle starts, decreases character skill impact by 10% and increases critical hit rate by 30% for 3 turns, increases character's power by 10% for 3 turns every 2 critical hits, gives character the ability to evade 1 time every 3 critical hits up to 3 times, gives character a barrier that nullifies 1 hit every time they defeat an opponent up to 6 times, so by far his top skill, the best skill in my opinion. Inasa increases character's power by 15% for 2 turns after receiving 2 attacks from an opponent affected by power up. Could be good with Inasa's multi-hit attacks on the UR version at least. Increases character's plus ultra move skill impact by 30% when character's power is increased. Increases character's skill impact by 20% if there are any UA high students on the team. Increases character's power by 20% for 4 turns when a wave starts. Increases character's power by 25% when HP is below 50%. That's the worst one so far. Increases character's critical hit rate by 15 percent every time they defeat an opponent that one's pretty bad too increases characters plus ultra move skill impact by 15 percent for three turns every two critical hits so he has a lot of uh just kind of mid unique ex auto skills in my opinion they're not going to be that great i think increasing plus ultra move skill impact is good and that increasing power is good i think those are probably like his best unique ex auto skills but yeah he doesn't have anything too crazy next we have shishikura shishikura if character receives an attack while having the ability to cause the opponent to become a meat lump increases character speed by 30 percent if you ever get a ur version man he will be nuts i feel like this shishikura should have been a ur like his kit is that good increases critical hit rate of all shiketsu high school allies by 15 percent decreases speed of all opponents by 15 percent for three turns when a wave starts increases defense of all allies by 20 percent for three turns when battle starts regenerates hp of all allies by 15 percent for three turns when character gets knocked out that one's not great reduces damage to character by 15 percent for two turns after receiving two attacks from an opponent with higher power increases character speed by 35 percent for one turn when a wave starts all of his skills are really good except for this particular one right here i think his top skill is honestly kind of nuts and could be very very useful and i think increasing crit rate of all shiketsu high students is actually also very useful as well next we have kami Kami gives character composure when HP is 80% or higher, increases character's defense by 20% when skill impact is increased, decreases power of all opponents by 10% for 3 turns when a wave starts, reduces critical damage to character by 30% for 4 turns when battle starts, when battle starts, decreases character skill impact by 10% and increases critical hit rate by 30% for 3 turns, we've seen that one a few times now, increases character's power by 20% when defense is increased, increases character's defense by 5% up to 6 times. I don't think any of her are particularly like ground shattering she has some decent ones you know they feel very generic like ones we've seen on other characters so she does have some okay unique ex auto skills getting to the end here we have three more get 10 is first increases chance of character causing freezing or frostbite and lowers chance of character becoming frozen or getting frostbite you automatically know that's probably my favorite right there because it is going to increase your chance of causing a status ailment increases power of all ally villains by 15 percent that one is solid as well this one's even better increases critical hit rate of all ally villains by 15 percent character skill impact is increased by 10 percent every two turns up to three times reduces damage to character by 15 percent for two turns after receiving two attacks from an opponent with higher power increases plus ultra gauge charge rate by 40 percent when character skill impact is increased that's really good for ve tower gives character a barrier that nullifies one hit every time they defeat an opponent up to six times everything but the last one is really good all of these really really good unique ex auto skills for getting second to last we have redestro redestro increases character skill impact by 25 percent every time one ally gets knocked out Blech. Increases character's defense by 20% for two turns after receiving two attacks from an opponent with higher speed. That one's actually decent. This is going to be, that one goes hard on the new Climax Battle Redestro, right? After receiving a critical attack, increases character's plus ultra move skill impact by 10% for three turns and defense by 10% for two turns. That one also goes, goes hard on the new Redestro too. Like these are, these are good. Increases defense of all allies by 20% for three turns when battle starts. It goes, he's got some good ones. He's got some really good ones 
Increases character skill impact by 10% for two turns after receiving a critical attack. That one's also good. It's it's all good. Increases character's power by 20% when defense is increased and his defense is increased all the time with the new redestro. So yeah, that could be, they're all good. They're all good. Increases characters plus ultra skill impact by 15% for three turns every two critical hits. It's honestly hard for me to tell you which one of these is better because they could all be useful. We'll have to wait until we actually start getting some climax battle redestros to level 130 and testing these out to see which one is the best, but they're honestly all pretty good. Last but not least, we have Flecked who can increase the speed of all ally villains by 15%. He increases character skill impact by 25% when using a barrier, increases character skill impact by 25% when character is affected by damage down, increases defense of all allies by 20% for three turns when battle starts, reduces damage to character by 15% for two turns after receiving two attacks from an opponent with higher power, increases character's defense by 5% per turn up to six times, gives character a barrier that nullifies one hit every time they defeat an opponent up to six times he doesn't really have too many bad unique ex auto skills this one once again being the worst of them all the rest of them up above being pretty decent if i had to pick i think the increase of speed to allies villains would be you know one of the best except for the fact that flecked or at least the version we have of him in the game is not really going to be used for pvp so in terms of like pve maybe the defensive one could be useful but he just doesn't really have unique ex auto skills designed for pve here uh, which makes me think maybe we'll get a ur flecked somewhere down the line maybe next year during the heroes missions reruns uh who will be pvp oriented but that is the video guys let me know which unique ex auto skill you thought was the best which character has the best unique ex auto skills which character has the worst in your opinion let me know down in the comments if you guys did enjoy the video please go down there hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and thank you guys for watching peace